Alongside always with Stephen Fines. And we're here tonight for our first Wednesday night special, ESW Manhattan Mayhem. That's right, Cruz, live from the Hammerstein Ballroom here in New York City. And we're starting this night off red hot with a grudge match for the ages. Varsity Ryan Evans is going to be taking on none other than his arch nemesis, The Hoove. And who do you have in this match, Cruz? Oh, you got to go with... You got to go with who? He's been on a roll other than losing his belt that he didn't get pinned for. But other than that, you know, he, he destroyed Ashley Monroe on, on you know, when when uh, the Who've met him on, was it fight night? That's right. And I, I, I see your logic there, Cruz, but you also have to put your money on what seems to be the underdog. The guy who just hasn't been able to put the pieces together. Varsity Ryan Evans, I think tonight he's finally going to be able to put to put the Hooves down once and for all. Well, he better because Hooves coming out looking for a fight. Right. Looks like the Hoove is like Jason taking Manhattan here in the Hammerstein Ballroom, always in theme. From no, that's Victoria, the thing about the Hoove. That's why the people love it. He's tuned in to pop culture. He's tuned in to what people want. You know, Varsity Ryan Evans, he could care less what people want. And that's why no one likes the guy. It doesn't matter if you're liked, Cruz. All that matters is if you can get the job done. And I think tonight is finally going to be the night that Varsity Ryan Evans gets the job done. I think the Hoove has been very impressive, and he's he's proved a lot of doubters wrong, myself included. But I just think tonight there's something in the air that tells me it's Varsity Ryan Evans' night. Well, I guess we'll just have to find out here. Our first match here tonight, the Hoove taking on Varsity. Ryan Evans. What's he always throwing down there, Stephen? Uh, it looks like he's throwing down a little J action there, Cruz. A little party favor. Exactly. A little oh, extracurricular. Who, who's coming in with the war paint tonight? A little face paint there. A little Voorhees action. Starting it off hot. Who's taking it directly to him? He's clubbing Varsity Ryan Evans in the back and stomping away at him. He kicks him away there. 
this is just going to be a slugfest crew, oh. no doubt about oh. it. Oh, yeah, this is not going to be a scientific uh, match here. This is going to be a, a brawl all day. Absolutely, he's got him up in a fireman's carry here. It's like the referee's kind of gotten in the way there, and that bar allows Varsity Ryan Evans to escape there. Oh, missed the big splash. He was firing away some right hands with Varsity Ryan Evans blocking him. And now a belly-to-belly -belly suplex by Varsity Ryan Evans. And, and, and that's what Evans has to do here. He has to use his power to his advantage. Now, now Stephen, let me ask you this. Now, if for whatever reason Ryan Evans does not win here tonight, what do you think that's going to do to his psyche? Oh, there's no telling what's going to happen if Varsity Ryan Evans just he can't, he can't get the job done here tonight. He might as well pack it up and just go ahead and take a job in the coaching or somewhere. Yeah, some high school coach. He looks like a high school coach. <laughs> he looks like he taught history as well. <laughs> or social studies. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, social studies. Oh, oh big what spear. a take spearing move right in half. Now let me ask you the now let me ask you the other side of that coin, Steven. What do you think it's gonna do to Hoove? You know, he just lost his title, you know. He's trying to get some momentum back. What do you think that's going to do to him if Ryan Evans can finally put him away? I don't know if who's the type of guy that lock bombs. So he might just be able to pick him up, pick himself up, dust himself off, and keep moving. But, oh, oh, my, my goodness. God. The hoop with a plancha to the outside. So impressive. Yeah, he's taking it to Ryan Evans. And this is what, you know, He's trying not oh, to make... Oh, Sherman released Sherman on the outside, and those mats are paper thin. Paper thin. He's trying not to have the same match he had with Evans as breakdown. Or oh, breakout. Yeah, absolutely. You have to step it up a notch. You know, he, he barely got away with a win in that one. Evans dominated that match. You, you can't say I'm wrong. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And that that's that's what you know I'm saying. There was something inside Lou that night that just was able to ink out that victory. But I think tonight is going to be a different story. And we're seeing just Evans taking it to who? Oh, just relentless with two power bombs. Now targeting that knee. Who trying to counter back? It looks like he's sizing him up here. Went through something. Got, ate a big shoulder block. And all, oh, out of nowhere. The Famouser from out of nowhere. He's become well known for that move. And now he went for the hoop to grab but Varsity Ryan Evans out of the way. Oh, big DDT. Into the cover. I don't even think he got a one there. Varsity Ryan Evans is just too fired up here tonight. Now it looks like he's sizing Hoob up for something here. Oh. oh my god! He just hit the Hoob with the stunner! And now th this crowd, you can tell, just hates this. Oh, that's just insult to injury. Right, just rubbing salt in the wound there. Now oh. Varsity Ryan Evans has him up. Hits him with the G-A-T-A. -A. He's hanging on to him. On lifts him back up into a fireman's carry. Hits it again, the GATA for the second time. I think he should be going for a pin here. I think this is more about making a statement. Oh, wait a minute. He, uh, he, for a third time, a GATA. Oh my god, no. For the fourth time, a GATA. My goodness. Varsity Ryan Evans is just taking it to who? Oh. Hoof still has some fight in him. Evans trying to stop that momentum. Oh, big seated drop kick. And the Texan madman, he's just he's just not human. No, he, he can with he can withstand an ungodly amount of punishment. Now Varsity Ryan Evans lifts him up here. Oh, we might be going for an avalanche GATA. Who fighting out of it here? I think who knows if he hits that, it's, it's game over. Well, absolutely. Shoves him off the top rope. And this is where I think Evans' emotions have gotten the best of him. He should have tried to cover who. Oh, absolutely. And I think the longer this match goes on, the longer it favors the who. Blocking that punch there. 
Wilson up for a vertical suplex and just holding him there. Showing off that strength of Varsity Ryan Evans. And Hoove is, and Hoove is not a small man. Oh, absolutely not. Stalling suplexes. Ooh, you can hear the thud from over here. Now it looks like he's dragging him towards the turnbuckle. This is uncharacteristic for Ryan Evans. Here. He's not usually an aerial tactician. Oh, drop the big elbow. I guess we guess we this is all or nothing, you gotta pull out all the stops. Indeed. Evans just just letting the crowd know that he's the man. And this crowd's letting him know exactly what they think of him. We know this New York crowd is uh, rather volatile to begin with. Alright, you are. Oh, showing off a little too much. He got a chop from the hoof, but he fires right back into a series of strikes. Oh, pick the foot. Going for an ankle lock. Hoof just powering out of it here. Oh, oh man. What a Claymore kick into See, the this, cover. This is a smart thing. Who's going right for the cover? He didn't get him, but that's what you have to do. Right. I think Varsity Ryan Evans just has so much emotional investment in this match. He just... Oh, he was getting him up for a GATA again, but who blocked it? Now he's got him up for a fall away slam. What, what's the other term you like to use for that? The old sack of shit. <laughs> Shout out Scott's Hall. R.I.P. The bad guy. What's who have in mind here? Oh my God! Another, another plancha to the outside. And you know that you know that can't feel good for who. You know. I don't think the who cares one bit. Now he's stomping a mud hole. The who is fired up. Let's go, who. Come on. Supposed to be a little unbiased there, Cruz. Hey, I'm trying to be. But Ryan Evans is just a jerk. Hey, jerks make money, Cruz. Oh, oh my God! Oh my God! A GATA on the outside. That's number five. Hoove is motionless on the outside. I think Evans may just take the count and win here. I mean, that would be the smart thing to do. The referee trying to get a response out of Hoove here. Evans is We're up to a count of six, and the Hoove finally beginning to stir. And this man is not human. He, no other man would be able to withstand this much oh, punishment. Oh, I agree. Oh, went for an overhead belly to belly, but who fighting out of it? Oh, I think he was going for a stunner there. Oh, got speared again by Varsity Ryan Evans. Oh, man, just right hands. Oh, big back break right there. Evans picks him up. Sends it back into the corner. Now he's lifting him up here. He might be going for that avalanche GATA once again. He's trying to put, this will be number six. And this is the big one. And oh my God! Oh. He nailed it into the cover. One, two, and three. Varsity Ryan Evans finally exercising the demon known as the Hoove. My and let's goodness. take another look here. A spear spearing the hoove in half, and then that famouser from out of nowhere. Who going for the hoove to grab a missing? That's the thing tonight. Hoove just couldn't couldn't line the dominoes up right. You know, he, he was off off a of beat, you know, and that's uncharacteristic for Hoove here, but you know, Ryan Evans, big victory. He needed it. Wait a minute. What, what he's going on the outside. He's grabbing the hoof. He's picking him up. And he just power bombs him on the outside. Now, this is unnecessary. He, uh, he's already beat the man. What, this, is, this isn't called for. It's just that frustration from weeks of not being able to beat him. He doesn't want to just beat him. He wants to take the hoof out. Oh, my goodness. He may just very well do that. There's some repeated chair shots. Oh, and now man. a chair shot to the dome. Oh, man. Leave the man alone. Wait now a he's minute. He's got him up number seven. Oh, on the chair. My God. Oh, my God. My God. Varsity Ryan Evans taking it too far. All right, guys. Next match we have here tonight, we have the Moretti Crime family taking on the Unit Club in six-man action. This should be uh, – I think this may be the end of this story here tonight. 
Hopefully this war comes to an end here tonight at Manhattan Mayhem, not only in this six-man ma tag team match here, but also later on tonight when Madison Shaw defends the ESW Diamonds Division Championship against the head of the Moretti crime family, Sophia Moretti. You know, that should be quite a contest in our semi-main event here tonight. Now, uh, the brothers Moretti here, you know, they're, they have suffered, I wouldn't say as much as Sophia, but pretty dang close, you know, being, you know, on the, on, on the wrong side of the unit club. Oh, absolutely. The unit club have had the Moretti crime family's number more often than not whenever they faced off. So tonight, you might, may as well consider this the war to settle all scores. Indeed. Here comes the trio known as the Unit Club. Here we have Unit Dallas Barton and Trey Allen. Right, you are Unit El Presidente of the Unit Club, along with Big Dallas Barton pounds. and uh, you know Trey Allen. Oh, scuzzball, Trey <laughs> Allen himself. I, I wonder what bar they had to you know, drag him out of for this match here tonight. Oh, there's no telling. You know, take your pick here in Manhattan. Right, you are in. Like I said, this should be a, a a good way to hopefully end this you know rivalry here, and and the girls you know they're going to put on a show here tonight, but this should be quite a spectacle as well. All right, you are. Yeah, every, all scores will be settled here tonight, hopefully, and we'll be able to put a final chapter in the war between the Moretti crime family and the unit club. And, and this has been going on for months now, Stephen. Ever since we launched here at ESW. You know, and and Madison Shaw is the uh, instigator of all of this. And throughout this entire saga between these two factions, the Moretti crime family have been, in, you know, in, you know, they've more or less been adopted by the fans here in ESW. You know, because of their endearing, you know, perseverance. Oh, absolutely. I mean, it goes to show how big a jerks the unit club are, where <laughs> the fans will get behind these dangerous individuals like the Morettis. Oh, right you are, Steven. I mean, not that the unit club aren't dangerous. Oh, don't get me wrong. Yeah, they're dangerous competitors, but I literally mean the Moretti crime family are dangerous people. <laughs> they've seen a thing or two. They've huh? seen some things. They've done some <laughs> things, from what I hear. Even even uh, Sergio? Yeah, even especially Sergio. Especially Sergio. Yeah, but you didn't hear that from me, cool. All right, guys. Sal here, taking on El Presidente unit here. Oh, oh man. These two alpha males colliding here in the ring. And, and, and not to take anything away from anyone in the unit club, but... Oh, hit him with that trouble in paradise. Into you know, the cover here. Lorenzo breaking it up, you know, but, but unit is, you know, and he's on a different level than the rest of these guys. At least in my opinion. You know, I've seen this guy here for years. You know, he's led the unit club for years. He's a former world champion. Oh, absolutely. I was about to say, you know, let's, let's give him his flowers when due. Yeah, a former world champion here in ESW. A very capable competitor that we haven't really seen that much of here just one in one-on-one -on -one competition. But when, he, when we do, man... You know, impresses. Oh, absolutely. And, and the thing with Unit, I mean, and I don't want to say the Unit Club has hindered him, but, you know, it, it's taken a lot of his time. Oh, absolutely. This war between the Moretti crime family and the Unit Club, it is, it has prioritized everything in, in both these groups. And that, that's all they've been focused on. So oh. hopefully tonight we can finally put a, a, a nail in this coffin. And so both teams can be able to focus on other endeavors. Move on, right you are, Steven. You know, and, and I remember after Anarchy, when the Unit and Madison lost to Sal and Sophia, I had a chance to catch up with the Unit and Madison backstage. And let me just tell you this. There was some tension between the two. You know, more or less, you know, Unit frustrated that, that Madison had drugged him and the rest of the boys in this war that he didn't ask for. Oh, absolutely! Yeah, you you ne it's 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 very you can feel that tension between uh, Unit and Madison Shaw because there's always going to be that give and take of who is the true leader of the group. You know, uh, you know, Unit calls himself El Presidente, but you know, Madison Shaw is the Diamonds Division champion. Right, right she's right the you one are. with gold around her waist. So, I mean, who is the who is the real leader? 
Oh, right you are, Steven. And, you know, but we'll see how the night ends with Madison in the title. Oh, absolutely. There's a good chance she might not be walking out of the Hammerstein Ballroom with that Diamonds Division title. Oh, Lorenzo with a big neck breaker on the scuzz bag, Trey Allen. I don't know what it is about Trey. I just don't like the guy. It's probably the greasy hair, <laughs> the greasy face, his just his greasiness in particular. I mean, look at Sergio. His hair is greased down, but I like the guy. Oh, another big neck breaker. Just take him to you. And just dropping him there with a neck breaker. Now he lifts him back up in here. Fireman's carry. Oh, damn. Oh, big slam into a cover. All that weight right on top. And Unit coming in saving, saving the match here. And that's another thing. It just the Unit, like, the Unit Club, they're a capable team. You know, don't get me wrong. But, yeah, it, they seem like they, they're kind of hindrances to Unit's uh, individual goals. Oh, absolutely. You know, I mean, not to say that Unit hasn't had success while he's been leader of the Unit Club, but... He's held more world titles before. I'll just put that up. Yeah, right you are. Yeah, and I think he wants to get back into that uh, category. So he's looking to end this once and for all. In comes Sergio. Oh, Trey trying to fight back. High up here, what do we have in mind? Neck breaker of his own. Trey, Trey I think he wanted to attack Barton, and Barton said not today. Oh, man, Sergio with a running knee. Big knee strike on the unit. Oh, referee tripped him up there. Referee putting on the turnbuckle tie again. You know, it looks like there was some uh, brouhaha on the outside. Some chicanery. Right you are. And now a big tag in the big Lorenzo. Oh. Back body drop. Going for the rock. Now whip back into the corner. This isn't where you want to be if you're a unit. Oh no, good teamwork here by the Mary Contact. Now a tag into Sal. The hitman. The mafioso. Oh. oh, but now a tag into the big Dallas Barton. Oh, dodge that punch. Barton with a hip toss. This with ease. Oh, that's a lot of man coming down on you right there. Mm, driving that big elbow into the heart. Barton's just a big dude, man. Look at him. God, he's a massive mammoth of a man. I mean, Lorenzo's big. Oh, German suplex. Lorenzo's kind of a thick boy. Barton's just massive. Yeah, L Lorenzo is a, he's he's adding one too many canolas, but Dallas Barton is just pure muscle. He's all protein shape. Exactly. Oh, but he just got hit with the hit out. And, and now again. he gets the hit one more time. Into the cover. Trey Allen there to interrupt the pin, save the match. That would have that could have been all she wrote there. Oh, absolutely. That's why you hit two. And now a tag back into Sergio. This is going to be one interesting matchup. Here we go with it. What do I have in mind here? Oh, Barton fighting now. Oh, Barton just dropping Sal on the outside. Now it looks like Lorenzo's trying to get Barton back into the ring. But Barton's taking Oh, he dropped time. Lorenzo. I'm, I'm sorry, my mistake. You know, all those white shirts, you can't really tell. No, got him up. Oh, what a suplex on a Sergio. Now we have a tag back into Trey Allen. He's got him up here. Oh, what a sit-out suplex into the cover. Kick out. Sergio trying to fight back here. Oh, flatliner, flatliner. 
<laughs> Take a shot every time you see a flatliner in the SW show. And now Sergio going up top here. Big splash. Oh. Into the cover. Kick out of one. Oh, oh man, Superman punch. Step oh, up. Step up Superman punch by Sergio. <laughs> and now another flatliner. Flatliner. Into the cover. And the Moretti crime family have defeated the unit club here in Manhattan Mayhem. And let's take another look here. This flatliner. And again. This is what ended the whole match, Sal, cutting unit off here from interrupting that pin. Oh my God, the Moretti crime family have come out the victory. They've come out with the victory here over the unit club. And can this keep going later on when Madison Shaw defends the Diamonds Division title against Sophia Moretti? Alright guys, let's get ready for our next the match up here tonight. The Open one Challenge one by Chanel Carter here. Chanel has been on a tear here in ESW as of late, just put, putting people on the shelf left and right. Oh, absolutely. She's been, yeah, like you said, she's been on a tear. She's been putting the Diamonds Division locker room on notice that she is ready for a Diamonds Division Championship match here. Yeah, there's, like, in my opinion, there is no one in the Diamonds Division locker room that is even close to Chanel Carter's level. Oh, not right now, no. Chanel's on a different level. And let's see who will, o who will answer her open challenge here tonight. She says she doesn't care who it is. All right, the anticipation is killing us. Wait a minute. Who's this coming out here? Says the inevitable. From Anaheim, oh my God! It's Ricky! Ricky's back! My goodness, look at her. She looks completely different. Ricky Riot is here, and Chanel Carter looks like she's seen a ghost. Oh, um, the crowd is in shock. They're, the crowd's going wild here. And the former Ricky Sexton here had her orbital socket crushed by Chanel Carter, and she's here at Manhattan Mayhem answering Chanel's open challenge. And she... She looks a little uh, deranged. She looks unhinged, Cruz. My goodness. What happened to Ricky? I wonder, is that mask, is, that, is this something she has to wear? I, I, have, I, I don't know what to say. I'm speechless. She's wearing an inevitable t-shirt. Oh, Ricky coming out the gate hot. Taking it to Chanel here. The, the woman who sent her out of action weeks ago. Oh. And now Chanel's fighting back, getting over that initial shock. Ricky. I think this whole crowd is in shock. Oh, I mean, I'm still in shock. Chanel with right hands of her own. Ricky Riot is back in ESW. I, I guess uh, the inevitable have rubbed off on her, wouldn't you say? All that time spent with Maul. It, oh, my God. It rubbed off her in her, on her in the worst of ways. <laughs> oh, you don't think she's attractive anymore? Come on, Cruz. Look at that. What has Ricky become? Oh, he just ate a, ate a big uppercut right there. And now Chanel, you know, that initial shock is worn off. Now she's proven exactly why she's in the position she's oh, in. Big uh, drop kick by Ricky. Oh, more right hand. This is just a brawl here. Chanel's fighting for her life. She doesn't know what... Ricky plans on doing to her into the cover here. And now just kicking her in that injured orbital socket. Maybe that mask in that. Oh, I don't know if it'll protect her from that. Yeah, you gotta think there's some sort of protection in that new face mask. 
Now she's got her up, hits the clash. My goodness. Hit Madison Shaw with the clash. And now she goes up top here. She's calling for something. Comes off the top with a cross body. And she goes back up top. She seems to be a little more erratic than before. Totally different competitor. Oh! oh! Calls that the riot act. My goodness, that could be it. Into the cover here. Oh, a near fall. Kick out at two by Chanel. And I bet Chanel Carter is uh, regretting leaving the rest of Hollywood in the back here. Oh, I bet. Oh. Big clothesline by Ricky. Ricky fighting back here with a drop kick. And yeah, we're seeing some more unorthodox offense by Ricky. Oh, what do we have? What do we have? Yeah. Got her up here with a big arm drag. Taking Chanel down to the mat. Oh, what's going on here? You know, trying to get away. Oh, big drop kick to the knee. Trying to take her down by the, in the legs first. And now hits her with another clash. Ricky just on a roll here. Ricky is relentless. And oh, the shadow of the moon. Into the cover. Oh, Chanel kicks out. Chanel again just getting the shoulder up at the count of two. Ricky just laying it to her. Now, now Steven, you know, if you were Ricky Sexton, what would your mind be going into this contest? Oh, well, if I, I would be able to anticipate what Ricky Sexton would do, but there's no telling what Ricky Riot is going to do. I, I don't know what to think of Ricky Riot. She's just throwing all caution to the wind here. Snell up top, what she have in mind. Looks like she's sizing her up here. Go for a double axe handle. Into the cover. That, that's the thing about Miss Carter. She doesn't have the flashiest offense, but it's effective. Right. You don't have to you don't have to be flashy to be glamorous. Oh, not at all, you know, and you know the thing, you know, Chanel's finisher is her stomping you in the back of the head. There's no, there's no scientific about there's that. There's nothing finesse about that. <laughs> but it is effective. Oh, with a clothesline there, Ricky taking Chanel down. I'd say it's one. Whoa, missed that big uppercut. I'd say it's one of the most, you know, vicious, you know, finishes we have here in this game. Oh, absolutely. If you could say the same thing about that shadow of the moon that Ricky, or Ricky Riot and Maul both use. Oh, right, you are, Steven. Oh. Oh, code breaker, my goodness. That unorthodox offense, getting that from the inevitable, surely. And now the shadow of the moon for the second time into the cover here. And Ricky Riot has defeated Chanel Carter here. And Manhattan Mayhem in the crowd is going crazy, Cruz. I, I, I'm, I'm a little speechless, Steven. You know, what is this going to do to Chanel Carter? Oh, there's absolutely no telling. But what is Ricky Riot have in store for the Diamonds division? I mean, I don't know if she's done with Holly's Here is your winner. Oh, it doesn't look like she is. All right, let's get ready for our next match. All right, guys, our next match here tonight, another grudge match as we see the best in the world, Juan Soto, coming out here in, in, in for this contest against his half-brother, Eric Acosta. Soto accompanied by your favorite person, Steven. Oh, that rat bastard talent agent, Jerry Fishman. Is scheduled for one fall. I still owe him 20 bucks. He won't stop texting me. <laughs> All right, guys, now this should be quite a contest. This is a falls count anywhere match. You know, Acosta demanded this stipulation after all the back and forth him and Soto have had over the last few weeks. The betrayal, you know, Soto, you know, turning his back on his brother, you know, out of nowhere, aligning himself with Fishman. You know, this is, you know, 
a, I, I don't want to say a, a radical change. You know, we've seen Soto in the past tangle with CD individuals, but, you know, not as of late. Yeah, this really isn't his M.O. normally is to rely on a talent agent to get him where he wants to be, which we all know where he wants to be is in that World Heavyweight Championship contention. Oh, absolutely. You know, when you're a competitor like Juan Soto who's been here and who's done everything, in his mind, there's only one place for him, the top. Oh, absolutely. And it looks like uh, Juan is telling Fishman to hit the bricks. You know, this may get a little uh, may get a little dirty here tonight. Yeah, I think I think uh, Fishman he might not want to be around when this carnage happens because yeah, I there is hatred like you can feel it in the air. Oh, this match definitely has big fight feel. Road all over. Gomez this is a main event caliber match. Oh, absolutely. These two half brothers. I mean, you know, they're, they're no they're no strangers to betrayal. But, I mean, it just, they, they seem like to be, you know, I've got your back and you'll stab mine. All right, you are, Stephen. You know, and, and the biggest shift between these two was the dynamic on who stabbed who in the back this time. Acosta has always been the, uh, the uh, more questionable one of the two. You know, but this time it seemed Acosta was putting his best foot forward, his hand forward to his brother. Well, absolutely. He saw Juan was struggling, you know, and he le he lent a helping hand out to his brother, and they they looked to appear on the same page, and they earned themselves a tag team title opportunity that Juan essentially just threw back in his face at Anarchy by deserting him. Oh, right, you are, Stephen. You know, I mean, this should be quite a contest here tonight. You know, like I said, this is a main event caliber match. You know, but. We, we not only have this match, but we got two more big-time matches here in Manhattan Mayhem. But here we go. False count anywhere. Soto, Acosta, let's go. Now, right out the gate. Oh. And I think that's one thing Acosta's going to have to check. His He's emotions. It, exactly. He's going to have to try to keep him in check to not step out of bounds. Because, yeah, Juan, any slip-up, Juan is going to take advantage of him. Oh, big Just overhead like suplex. He's laying into him with big right hands. Now sweeping his legs out from under him. Bringing him down with a big cross face. Powered out of it. Now, now I haven't had the chance to, you know, since all this went down with these two. Have you had the chance to talk with Soto or anyone in the back of that? Anything like this? If it has a line with Fishman or anything? Look, I've been trying to schedule a sit-down meeting with uh, Juan Soto, but uh, you know how Fishman is. <laughs> he says he says he'll have his people call my people. What people, Fishman? <laughs> you don't have people. Acosta. You live in your mom's basement, Fishman. <laughs> Acosta trying to take it to Soto here. Acosta busted open already. Oh, was they pulled out a broom? That's a shovel. Oh, shovel! Oh my God! Even worse. It's wearing it out. Oh, Acosta fighting back. He's got him up in a fireman's carry. Oh, oh! Drives him right into the barricade here. Oh man! Now Acosta just laying into his brother. Takes him back down with another cross face. And if Juan taps out here, it's over because this is false count anywhere. Right you are. Oh, kick that means pinfalls and submissions. Picking up that shovel again. Oh, oh dings him right in the dome. Oh, oh man. what a kick. Into the cover by Acosta. Now a big drop kick by Juan. And then goes for it. Oh! To the back of the head. And now more weapons being introduced into this match. Now we have a table. Oh, man. The fans are going wild here. They love tables. 
Who can blame him? And now a belly-to-belly -belly suplex on the outside by Juan Soto. Oh, just taking it to that open wound. I think he, I think he wants to spill all of that blood all over the mat here. That blood that he shares with Eric Acosta. What's Soto doing here? Getting more, more plunder. More foreign objects here. And now, now we have a ladder at play. Right to the face. Now it looks like the cable's being oh, put man. in play here. It sets it up here in the middle of the ring. What's he have in mind? Oh, Acosta fighting back. Now he drags him towards the table. This is, looks like it's going to backfire on one. What do we have going on here? He's going to hit him with a fireway oh. slam through the table. The old sack of shit slam. Shout out Scott Hall once again. And now here comes that shovel. Oh. Juan kicks it away. Oh. Big right hand. Knee. Into the barricade again. Now it looks like there's more weapons being brought into this match. Oh, a sledgehammer. He's dropping that right on it. Oh. He went for it. He went for his uh, back elbow there. Soto yeah, got went. out of the way. Yeah, that strikeout, you know, you can hit that out of nowhere. Oh. oh drop toe hold into an STF. No rope breaks here. Yeah, if he gets to that ropes, it doesn't matter. The cost of fighting out of it. Back elbow, fighting out. Manages to escape that submission hold. You know, he's got him up in a fireman's carry. Transitions and power bombs oh, my him goodness. all to the outside. That has got to hurt. Oh, and he's taking the sledgehammer to him. And now a cover here. Referee out of position there. That could have been, that could have been it. Mm -hmm. Oh, big German on the floor. It's kind of hard to be in position in a match like this, Cruz. Oh, I, I agree. I don't blame the referee one bit. I'd stay out of, far away from the action as I could. Soto with another table. Better be careful. The last one backfired on him. Acosta with a chair here. Who's going to strike first? Who was Oh, smashes him with the table. You know, he sets the table up here. Oh, my God. He set the table on fire. We have a flaming table here in the Hammerstein Ballroom. Not the first time. Not the first time at all. Probably not the last. Oh, absolutely not. And these fans are going crazy. Oh, Acosta knocking the table off. And now they're just booing. <laughs> I mean, you don't bring in a flaming table and then take it away from them. I mean, who's the heel? Who's the baby face here? Oh, me? right you are. Well, I don't think Acosta wanted to get put through it. Oh, I don't blame him. Soto trying to drag Costa to that table. Costa managing to fight back here. Now he sends Juan into the table. Again. And oh. it backfires one more time. I think Acosta should be going for the cover here. Oh, he's going for some plunder. He didn't want this. He thought about the sledgehammer in second body. There you go. That's what you should be on. The ref out of position here. Juan able to kick out again. These two men have just been beating the hell out of each other. 
And that's pretty much what we all expected to happen. Oh, right you are, Steven. Oh, yeah. big neck break on the floor. We're going to cross the back of the room here. So they're going for more weapons. Looking on all sides here. He pulls out another table. Maybe the third time is the charm. Oh. He cost us sending one back into the ring. And that one grabbing that chair to protect himself. Just daring him to come in. The cost of just circling the ring like a shark. Oh, it did him no good. Knocking the ladder down with him. Oh, the knee. Again. He's wearing him out with those chair shots. Oh, drop kick onto the ladder. You yeah, see the way it cost his body just. Yeah, just bounced off that ladder. Super kick. Just folded him up with that super kick. No one lodging that chair into the corner. Getting that ladder out of the way. Oh, it sends him right into the ladder. Oh, big chop on the Ricosta. And now he's got him up here. Hits him with the go to hell. And Eric Acosta is out. I think he finally wants to put him through that table. He's been trying. He's been trying to put him through that table. It's been backfiring him all night. I think he I think he's in a good position to finally put him through it. Oh, maybe not. Oh, the second thought it. He gave Eric Costa just enough time to recover. Oh, oh on the chair. Now right back to that table. Smashes him in the face with the table. Oh. Big up with that. And, and we have fire once again. The crowd erupts. We're going to cost the fighting back here. Neither man wants to go through that flaming table. Soto into the corner. Oh, man. Dodges again. It's counter after counter here. Neither man wants to take that. Oh, and now he's got him in the STF again. What a visual statement. Look at that. Cinema. Absolutely cinema. He's just... Oh, Eric Acosta finally able to escape. Refusing to give up. Well, I think that's the last thing he'll ever do is tap out to his bro own brother. Now he picks up a chair. Swings it at Juan, Juan sidesteps, but oh, gets hit right in the face with it. And this crowd is going wild. Juan thrown to the outside. Oh, atomic drop. Oh, right in the family jewels. <laughs> How appropriate. Into the cover here. Kick out. You know, Costa sending one right back in the ring. You know, try to send him through that table. Misses oh. Mark there. Was not close enough. Oh, another chair shot. <laughs> to the dome. But that just looked to fire one up. He just kipped up. 
Oh, you're a Nagi. You're a Nagi again, missing that table. Soto with adrenaline just pumping to his veins, just kipping up again. He's entering another gear. And, oh, oh, what a German suplex through the flaming table! And this crowd is going wild. And now Eric Acosta is back up, but he's, you can tell some of that hair has been cinched off his body. That beautiful hair of his. And now Juan's got him back up. Another go to hell. But Juan, instead of going for the cover here. Oh, knock the ladder right there. I don't know what he's thinking right there. He let you say he set the ladder right back up here. And now he's climbing up to the top. Oh, and Eric Acosta's back up trying to knock him off the ladder. Once, oh, oh! Knocks him right off the top of the ladder. Just ate shit. Oh, back elbow. Oh. Oh, just turned him inside out with a lariat. Both these men are just so spent physically. Oh, busted him open right there. Right into the edge of that ladder. Now both men are busted wide open. Oh. The family blood has been spilled on the mat. Oh, went, went for that, 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 uh, that back elbow of his. He's got him up for a third time. The go to hell. Picked him up. And for the fourth time, go to hell. He's, he's not covering it here. Uh, this is this is less about the victory and more about the message. Now Juan going back up top to that ladder. Comes no. up. Oh, missed the elbow. Acosta trying to take advantage here. Trying to sneak out a victory. All but one just gets the shoulder up at the count of two. Barely. And that ladder opened him up really well. Oh, and a fisherman suplex there, bridging the pin. They kicked out at a one. Juan is slow to his feet. Oh, right hand. Fighting back here. Lifts him up and just throws him down with a power bomb. And this has been one hell of a match, Cruz. Went for another power bomb, but Eric oh. Costa countering with a back body drop. Counter after counter, and another lariat turning at Costa inside out. And now Juan on the apron. A springboard. Oh, went for an elbow drop, didn't quite get all of it. And that's just wearing down the leg. That leg DDP. And now back out to the apron. We've seen this before from Juan. The kill shot lariat. Physics defying kill shot lariat into the cover. And Acosta kicked out. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. No one can believe it. And now for the fifth time. Go to hell. And this has got to be it, Steven. Into the cover one more time. And three. Juan Soto with the big victory here. And Manhattan mayhem. And let's take another look at this mayhem. Oh, a big kick from Acosta. Getting out of the... Uh, that STF, STF yeah. And then that, that backfiring on Soto. And that kill shot lariat. Here is your winner. And that's it, ladies and gentlemen. Juan Soto defeating his brother in this all out war. Man, I can't wait to see what comes next for both of these guys. Rest, rest, rest.
wrestling has only one true outcast. See it, ladies and gentlemen. Bree George coming to ESW very soon, actually. She will be debuting on the next episode of ESW Saturday Night Fight Night on uh, December 9th. Exactly, Cruz. And speaking of Diamonds Division here, we have the Diamonds Division title match, the match we've all been waiting for, the culmination of this war between the Moretti crime family and the unit club. Here we have them head of the Moretti crime family, Sophia Moretti. And she is bound and determined. She didn't start this war, but she's bound and determined to finish it by capturing the Diamonds Division title from the Black Mamba herself, Madison Shaw. And that would be quite the feather in the hat for Sophia and the rest of the Moretti crime family to finally put an exclamation point on this rivalry to show you might have started this, but look who's win but look who actually won in the end. I have your title. Exactly. And a feather would look good in that hat, too. Oh, I know. Not many women can pull off them big, goofy hats. Sophia can. Oh, absolutely. She can pull off anything she wants. <laughs> and I'm mad. All right, ladies and gentlemen, out next, the first lady of Unit Club, Black Mamba herself, Madison Shaw, the ESW Diamonds Division champion. And she is storming to the ring with a purpose. Oh, right you are, Steven. You know, they had their one-on-one -on -one match, their title match, uh, on one of our previous broadcasts, and, and Madison just got herself disqualified. Yeah, she yeah, she she could have had the she had the match won, but then decided to grab a chair and get herself disqualified. Thus, you know, we have this match here tonight. And I have it on good authority that if she tries something like that again, the title will switch hands. Makes sense. And there we have, she's telling the crowd exactly what she thinks of them here. Now the rest of her team weren't too successful earlier. Let's see if she can bounce back. There's the Diamonds Division title. Gorgeous. Gorgeous title for gorgeous ladies. Exactly, Cruz. Introducing the and the fans here are going crazy. The fans here are firmly behind Sophia. This is a hometown crowd for, well, both ladies, but they seem to, you know, have latched on more to Sophia than they have a Madison Shaw. Madison Shaw doesn't show that Jersey spirit like that Sophia does. I don't think she cares where she's from. <laughs> she has no, she has no hometown pride. In the title to the referee here. Getting ready for this title match. And this match has big match feel. Oh, definitely. This could main event any night. And absolutely a drop kick attempt blocked there. Madison Shaw pulling her up with a power bomb right out the gate. And, and if you're Madison Shaw, you want to get this done quick, quick and easy. Oh, Take her out quick. Madison Shaw doesn't get paid by the hour. No, and the, the thing is with this rivalry, rivalry, we've come to the point where Madison's, you know, she's had to eat crow a, a time or two. And I think she's over it. I think she just wants to be done with Sophia 
and finally just put her down. Oh, right you are. And I think Sophia is thinking the same thing. I think she's tired of dealing with Madison Shaw and she wants to stick it to her once and for all by taking the Diamonds Division title from her. And nothing could get her more than that. Because that's what she holds precious. I would say she holds the Diamonds Division title more precious than the rest of her team. Oh, absolutely. You know, that's she, pretty obvious. You know, she's put her whole team, you know, at her mercy to do her bidding while she's been entangled in this war and to hang on to that Diamonds Division title. Or by hook or by crook, she's held on to that title. Well, a counter there by Sophia Moretti getting back into the driver's seat of this match. Now the series of those strikes and kicks. Oh, yeah. We've seen this before. The mafiosa. Exactly. Boom. <clears throat> With the Bronco Buster. The Bronco Buster. Oh, boy. And the Jersey Turnpike. Oh, man. Is she going to get it right already? She very well could. Oh, but Madison Shaw just getting the shoulder up at the count of two. A near fall there. And that was the closest Sophia's gotten to scratching gold. No, oh, more of it in, in the straight punches. Oh, and a big slap. It's an insult to injury there. And, oh, an edge of Matic on the outside. And that just like, stomps to the face. There is no love loss between these two women. Oh, not at all. Pure hatred. Sends her into the side of the ring there. Now Sophia back into the ring. Oh! Oh, hits a kick to the midsection. Madison, you know, showing off there. Yeah, spending a little too much time taunting the crowd. Now out to the outside. And a drop kick sends her to the mat below. Now Sophia up top. Goes oh. for a big splash to the outside. And the crowd is going crazy. From the high rent district. She took a huge risk and it paid off. Oh, and now it looks like she's going under the ring for something. Thought better of it. Oh, big right hand. Now, I know you ladies might be confused. This match is not false count anywhere like the last match. So, referee up to a count of five here. Both these women need to be careful they're not counted out here. I mean, Madison Shaw doesn't matter, but Sophia won't be in the title that way, but now they're back in the ring. Oh, more of those, more of those mafiosa strikes. And another Jersey oh, Turnpike into the cover. Could that be it? But she's done it. Sophia Moretti has won the ESW Diamonds Division title here in Manhattan Mayhem, and the crowd's going crazy. Let's take another look here. No strikes there. And that Jersey Turnpike, the first one, those more of those strikes. And that second Jersey Turnpike. Then Sophia Moretti has finally defeated Madison Shaw once and for all, and is walking out of New York City with the ESW Diamonds Division title. What a win. What a big win. What a win for the Moretti's, man. This is great. This is great. Let's get ready for our main event, guys. All right, guys. Let's get ready for our main event here tonight. The ESW World Heavyweight Championship match as the Dire Wolf Bishop challenges R-E-N. What a main event here. Oh, right you are, Cruz. I mean, this man, the Dire Wolf Bishop, he has been on an absolute tear since debuting here in ESW. This man has, has not been pinned or submitted in his entire 
career here at ESW. His very short career, but his very dominant career. And he has earned himself a title opportunity here tonight. I think this is unprecedented. Oh, I would agree with you, Steven. You know, and, and he's defeated some big names here. You know, he's defeated Juan Soto. He defeated Kimura. You know, he he has earned his spot here tonight. And I know R.E.M. wasn't too pleased about it either. Oh, I don't think he's too pleased about having to defend his championship not long after defending his championship overseas at Anarchy in a triple threat match. I think that's his biggest gripe here, is so soon after defending in that grueling triple threat match, he has to defend against the probably the most dominant force here in ESW, the Dire Wolf Bishop. I mean, I'd be upset too, Cruz. But if you're R.E.M., you know, you should be ready for anything if you're the world champion. You should be, and I absolutely agree with you there. And, I, and you know, as great as Bishop has been, as dominant as he's been, he's coming up against a brick wall here, and his name is Ronald Eugene McCulley. Because everything you've said about Bishop, you could say the same thing about R.E.M. Everyone that has stepped foot in R.E.M.'s path, he has mowed down. Oh, Without a doubt, R.E.M. has been on, I would say, a more impressive, you know, streak here than Bishop. I mean, you know, his matches are short. They're, they're dominant. You know, he doesn't play around. He definitely doesn't get paid by the hour at all. Oh, not at all. He comes in, smashes you, pins you, and leaves. Right you are, Steve. You know, R.E.M. doesn't care about many things. He cares about that title, the troops, and the USA. Exactly. Those three things. As long as those three, as long as those three things are uh, are withstanding, he's a happy man. Oh, right, you are. That's exactly right. REM. That's the three things that he stands for. And right now, he's standing in the middle of the ring with as the ESW World Heavyweight Champion. Can he? Can he walk out with that title? Please. I think. I think he can, but I think Bishop might just have his number tonight. I guess we just have to wait and see. I can't wait to get this match started in our main event here for ESW Manhattan Mayhem. You know, Steven, you know, tonight we haven't had a whole lot of scientific uh, matches here. They've all been pretty, they've all been Pier 6 brawls. Well, you've seen the venue here. We're in the Hammerstein Ballroom. The, 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 the you know, this is the place of extreme. Right you are, Steven. This match here should be nothing less. This should be a, a fight from start to finish. This is going to be a smash mouth in your face brawl. Big meaty men. Big meaty men slapping meat. Like you are, Steve. Biggie would be proud of me. Exactly. The dire wolf bishop, R.E.M. Ronald Eugene McCulley. The good old boy. You know, and ever since he you know, had this initial run here in the city, he's, he's only had one thing to say. He's, a, he's been on one mission. To make wrestling great again. I think he's done that. And I think he has. You know, under his title reign, ESW has been thriving. Oh, absolutely. With Bishop getting a good look at that championship, will he be able to walk out with it? That may be the closest he gets. Could be. That beautiful world championship. The dire wolf Bishop, R.E.M. Ronald Eugene McCulley. One-on-one. -on -one. World Heavyweight Championship, let's go. Went for, for that lariat. He usually catches his opponents off guard with that. Oh, Bishop is showing his power off the gate. I've never seen R.E.M. manhandled like that before. No, me either. Oh, Bishop taking him down with a lariat of his own. R.E.M. is not used to this kind of, kind of energy from his opponents. Oh, man. Just slams him. Just on the receiving end of this onslaught. Bishop is not playing around here at all tonight. He is focused on becoming World Heavyweight Champion. Oh, drops that knee on the arm. Gives him up here with those strikes, forcing him into the corner. Oh, back again into the corner. Lifts him up here, but oh, REM counters with a big boot. Now REM is finally able to fight back here. Hits him with an Alabama slam. 
Now REM right back in the driver's seat where he feels he belongs. That NASCAR seat. Oh, exactly. He doesn't strike me as a Dale Earnhardt kind of guy. Yeah. Like he's more oh. Of, oh! That disc is Larry. Like he's more of a Jeff Gordon guy. <laughs> Fisher with the cover there with the discus lariat. And just this this is just turned into a slug fest. Oh, Bishop showing his power here. Just a stalling suplex and, and oh squatting down. And now squatting. And this crowd is going crazy for Bishop. He's getting all fired up. Throws him into the corner. Again, lifts him up. And now he, oh, was superplex. I'm surprised the ring stayed intact. That was a, a, lot, of, a lot of men falling into the mat. Oh, absolutely. But R.E.M. smartly rolling to the outside. Went for a lariat, but no, Bishop catches him again. Oh, oh. slams him right on the barricade. He throws him right into the barricade once again. And R.E.M. is just, he's never faced anyone like Bishop before. Oh, uh, he's completely flabbergasted. Thrown off his he, game here. He might have underestimated Bishop here. Not Bishop fighting back here. Oh, went for a powerbomb. Oh. R.E.M. counters with a back body drop to the outside. Now R.E.M. goes back in the ring. Stopping the referee's count. Mm. Oh, right into the corner. Right into that ring post. Now throws him right back into the ring. Now Bishop going up top here. He could be going for winner's landing, but oh, he's, he's actually sizing him up for something. Big, big double axe handle. Now Bishop, oh, hanging him up on the ropes. And Bishop is just dominating R.E.M. here. We've never seen R.E.M. dominate like this before. Oh, it's unheard of. And a roar from the Dire Wolf oh. went for a spear, but R.E.M. Got the knee up. A brilliant, brilliant strategy. And now he's got him up here. Hits the G.O.B., the good old bomb. Into the cover. Oh, and he kicks out. Oh, my God, the Dire Wolf kicked out of the G.O.B. R.E.M. not happy with that. R.E.M. cannot believe it. And he's just, he goes off the ropes, hits that big forearm. We've seen that before. And that usually sets up into the G.O.B. Oh, slap. Oh. He's big. Oh, he lifts him up, going for a G.O.B. again. That's it. For the second time, that has to be it. Oh, my God. Bishop kicked out again. Unheard of. R.E.M. is R.E.M. is R.E.M. is enraged and in disbelief, frustrated. He doesn't know what to do. He's just gonna lift him up for a power bomb here. Bishop rolling to the outside. Now R.E.M. going up top. This isn't this isn't usual for R.E.M. Oh, Bishop caught him. Oh, that cost him. Big backbreaker. Right into the barricade once again. Oh, man, again. 
R.E.M. just being manhandled. R.E.M. fighting back here. And this crowd is going ballistic. Again into the barricade. We have up to six here. Bishop needs to get him back in the ring. Well, absolutely, if he plans on walking out with that title. And there we are back into the ring. And now winner's landing. Oh. Winner's landing by Bishop. Into the cover. And he done it. That's it. Bishop, the dire wolf, has become the ESW World Heavyweight Champion. And I can't believe it. Let's take another look. That discus lariat in the GOB. And B Bishop is now our ESW World Heavyweight Champion. After kicking out of two GOBs, he hit the winner's Here's landing. Winner and became the ESW World Heavyweight Champion, and I and the rest of these fans are in shock. My goodness, the page has definitely turned here in ESW. What will we have in store with Bishop leading the way here? Now, ladies and gentlemen, thank you guys so very much for joining us here at ESW Manhattan Mayhem. We will catch up with you on December 9th for our next episode of ESW Saturday Night Main Event. For uh, Cruz de la Cruz, and I'm Stephen Fine saying like, comment, subscribe, and ring the notification bell. Thank you and good night.